to the the storied history of ham radio. And um, let's see, uh, any questions for me before we uh, uh, pass it on to Stan and do our program? Any club questions or anything that I can answer? And Jerome, thank you for, uh, you do a great job of uh, uh, heading the, up the uh, session there and, and Mark answered a lot of questions, so that's great. Um, any, anything for me, otherwise we'll, We'll move right on, and like I say, we'll let you know when the uh, uh, when it comes up for the uh, the drawing and go in the chat and, and do that. So uh, I will stand by for a second, and I don't hear anybody come back. So uh, we'll pass it on to you, Stan. Uh, okay. And Stan Trout, WB2SHR, and he's going to tell us about uh, – how uh, how ham can live happily in an HOA. So that's a, a good uh, a good subject these days. So uh, it's all yours, Stan. And like I say, everybody, please mute if you haven't. You got it. Okay. Thank you very much, Sherry. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm hoping everybody can hear me okay and see the slides and all that. Uh, I spend you sound more... fine. You okay. sound fine. Yeah. I spend more time on Zoom than uh, other formats but uh, uh jeff was very nice this morning and and we did uh, we did pretty well i'm going to do something a little unorthodox here and uh, if i can go to the end no let's see everybody seeing the final slide or just the first one well we're seeing because yeah. just just the first one just the first one okay so for some reason it's not letting me advance so let me try this again i'll do this and this and we see you now that's good that's good and let's see Let's do that. Well, it's still going back to the beginning. So, are you? Do you have the presentation open before you share it? I did. Yeah, yeah. A little confused on that, but let's see. Let's try. Let's try this one more time. Yeah, the car always runs when the mechanic is present. But. Yes, yes. And, uh, I don't want that. It, it uh, well, let's try. No, I don't want that. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. I got that. Yes, good, good, good. I will go to the end as my unusual move here. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is um, there's a QR code there in the bottom left-hand corner uh, that will take you to uh, uh, my website and you'll just be able to download this presentation. Uh, and then once you've downloaded it, the, there are two references there that I quote, uh, one from the villages and then the other one called uh, Stealth Antennas. So you can uh, pull up the file now and follow along if you want. But uh, I thought I'd make that uh, known uh, uh, right away. And uh, good. We'll go back to the beginning. And yeah, Stan, for some reason, you popped out of presentation mode, and now we're seeing the thumbnails on the left. And yeah, let's see. How's that? There you, there you go. Now you're back in. OK, good. And I'm, I'm advancing. Good, good. So um, you know, one of the things I thought about while I, while I was sitting here uh, uh, getting ready was the idea that uh, I, I took um, undergraduate uh, physics and and had to take a class, or I didn't have to. I, I enjoyed a class on fields and waves, and they talked about antennas, and they showed a very nice-looking dipole and said, well, it's easy to imagine what this is. It's, it's a radiator. Uh, it's uh, very far away from, uh, from the ground and any other interference, uh, and it's operating in a vacuum. And uh, here I've been a ham for almost 50 years, and I've, I've never seen that antenna. 
uh, uh, maybe it exists in space, but uh, it does remind us, I think, that uh, every, everything else that we see is, uh, is kind of a compromise. And, uh, and, and so uh, it's, it's a good starting point, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I got interested in this. I think I, I've been listening a few times when uh, different repeaters and uh, people get started about HOAs. And it, 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 it seems to uh, uh, bring up a lot of uh, enthusiasm or angst or anger or something. And um, uh, since I've been involved in my own and, and kind of know how things work from the inside, uh, I thought, well, that's that's kind of a, maybe an interesting perspective, and uh, and, and we'll see uh, we'll see what happens. I also wanted to shout out to my friend uh, John Gibson, who's here from uh, from Michigan, staying up late. Uh, uh, N O eight V. Uh, John and I taught together at uh, at Alma College for a couple of years, so uh, lots of fun. Um, so I'll state the problem. Um, one of the resources I'll bring up tonight is from a, a very large condo complex in, in Florida called The Villages. Uh, I think one of the points I make is they have five zip codes. So they're, they're, they're rather large. And, and they were my inspiration for much of what I'm about to say because uh, I think they attack the problem the way you would hope, I think. Uh, Hams would attack it and say, okay, this is our situation. How are we going to do this? And um, they seem to come up with some very practical advice. Uh, they are letting me use their full 75-slide uh, presentation. Uh, that's one of the links. I uh, pared that down, and I, I just picked one type of antenna uh, to look at because uh, I think uh, you'll get the gist of what they do and, uh, and, and get some things out of that. And then I just have a few pictures from my own personal way of attacking this. Uh, and then, then we'll get into conclusions and, and references. So uh, here, here's, here's what my HOA has to say about antennas. And um, unless you're a lawyer, uh, this just seems like a, a word salad that, uh, uh, that somebody has uh, thrown in there. And, and, and if you start to read it, you might say, well, I don't think I can put up an antenna at all. And actually, if you read down a little bit further, you can. Uh, you would have to have it approved. Uh, which would mean that your neighbors and our, um, our your neighbors would have to approve, and our architectural review committee would have to uh, approve too. Um, we've got almost 300 units here. I don't think anybody's ever asked for uh, a ham radio antenna, uh, but there is another ham here. I know him. Uh, we chat every once in a while, and he's got a, a, a outside antenna up. Um, he told me about it. Uh, I haven't reported him because I'd have to report it to myself, I guess. But uh, uh, you have to stand at one place in the driveway and look in one specific direction and say, oh, that's a rotatable dipole over there. It's like, okay, well, uh, nobody's complained, so it's, uh, uh, it, it's not a problem. Uh, the one thing that amazes me when I got into all this was um, uh, satellite dishes uh, are federally protected. So HOAs are forbidden to uh, say you can't have them. And um, I don't know about you, I get a little tired of looking at satellite dishes, and especially when I know that uh, somebody doesn't use it anymore, you know, that they were on dish and switched back to Comcast or something like that. And it's like, well, that's a satellite dish that's not actually in use. Why does it need to be up there? And uh, about the best we can do is to request, ask people if, well, when you're getting painted, you know, you might want to take that dish down because it, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't work. So the rules can be cumbersome. Um, it can be a little bit bureaucratic. Um, I'm guessing a, every HOA has its own uh, kind of personality and way it um, uh, interacts with things. But uh, you know, that's that's part of life. Um, one one picture, uh, and and my friend John will get a kick out of this. Um, you know, uh, a lot of times I've, I've said something about ham radio antennas to people and they say, well, not, not like that guy in Greenwood Village over there because he's got the tower and all this stuff. So it, it reminded me of my friend, uh, John, uh, WD8RXP. He was a neighbor of mine uh, when I lived in, in Michigan. Um, he built this tower, uh, 190 feet tall, uh, and it is built like the proverbial brick outhouse. And... Um, uh, designed it himself. It's on a relative, or was on a relatively small uh, uh, suburban lot, and um, uh, it it was a monster. It was just uh, just amazing. Uh, it was featured in QST. His uh, friend uh, uh, Norm uh, Keon wrote an article up about it, and uh, 
unfortunately, Johnson's passed on and the uh, towers come down. But um, um, as much as I love ham radio, I don't I don't know if I would want that in in my immediate vicinity either. But but like I said, it, it was built uh, uh, really well. I, I will tell you one anecdote about it. I, I lived about 10 miles north of John, and he had a friend who was um, uh, Rex, who was out uh, maybe 20 miles west. And one night I heard him on Simplex, uh, just yakking it up a little bit. So I, I thought I'd, I'd jump in and say hello. And um, Rex, I heard rather well. Uh, but John, the guy with the monster antenna, and at the very top, at the 190 feet, I think he had um, uh, two uh, two meter um, um, yaggies. Uh, maybe 11 elements vertically polarized that, you know, he could, he could do almost anything with. And I, I had to tell him that, uh, John, your, your signal, it's, it's a little bit scratchy uh, tonight. I was very sheepish when I said it. And uh, he said, oh, hang on just a minute. And all of a sudden, uh, about 30 seconds later, he comes back and my needles pinned and everything. And he said, well, I, I have some noise problems. And so sometimes I'll turn the antenna the other way. Uh, so I was hearing him off the back end of his antenna and it was a little bit funny, but, uh, he practically blew me out of my seat when, uh, uh when he turned him around and faced me. So, uh, it, it, he had a, a monster signal, that's for sure. So obviously a, um, uh, a, a, maybe a, a, a less obtrusive way to do this is, is something like the flagpole antenna. I'll, I'll talk about this some more because this is the example I picked from, um, uh, uh, the villages. Um, they can be uh, buried pretty nicely. Uh, usually a flagpole is kind of an acceptable uh, thing to put in the yard. Uh, it, 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 from what I've read, it, it sounds like you need lots of radials. So uh, they, they said at least 32 in uh, uh, a couple of the things I read. Uh, and it requires a remote tuner. Um, of course, these people are in Florida where maybe weather's less of an issue than it is uh, here. But that's pretty nice. It blends in and, and does uh, does pretty well. Uh, just a reminder on the on the tuner question. This is from uh, Steve Ford's uh, uh, book on antennas. Uh, how important it is to put the tuner for an antenna like that at the antenna itself. Um, getting the SWR down to one to one for your rig is nice for the finals of your rig. They, they'll they'll be very happy to uh, feed into that signal. Uh, but if you have a high SWR for a 50 foot run, say um, that's radiating and you need to get power to the antenna and not not to the coax. So uh, that's the why it's so important to get the uh, uh, the tuner um, at the base of the antenna. But let me explain a little bit about the villages and why I find them uh, kind of inspiring about this. Um, they're in Florida, a little bit north of Orlando, south of Ocala, and north of Tampa and St. Pete, I guess. Um, and gr growing in population. Uh, uh, every time I look, there are more people that are there, but they're up to 130,000 uh, now. I'm on their mailing list, and they're always writing about uh, some new uh, subdivision that they've opened up. Uh, but it's 32 square miles, uh, five zip codes. They have their uh, own website, obviously. Uh, and they have a fairly active uh, ham radio club, so that's their the link to their um, uh, website. Uh, and I talked to Mike Regan. He's KM4ZTE. Uh, he's the president of the club, and I asked him if, if surely they would have somebody there who would want to give this talk. And uh, he said, oh, no, no, you just go right ahead. You use our slides and everything. It's uh, it's fine. Um, but when I chatted with him, he, um, he made a couple of comments. He said, um, most of the people there, they have a lot of contesters. And, and you would think, well, gee, contesters would want to have like some kind of massive thing. And he said, no, no, no. Uh, they like the flagpole. It's the most popular antenna that they have. And he said people either run it as a, as a quarter wave or uh, off-center fed, uh, and they're happy with the results. So that had me a little bit puzzled. So I dug into their presentation a little bit more. And, and like I said, um, I'm not going to go through their whole thing. I just picked the flagpole antenna as an example. And you'll see some other charts and things that relate to some of the other things uh, they look at. But uh, let me go ahead here and advance. So one of the things I think they do that is great is that they um, have this chart. And so they look on the left on all these types of antennas that you can have. And then they run through and compare various things about how is it on the air? How stealthy is it? Uh, 
how difficult is it to install and cost and, and how it does on, on different bands. And so you might stop uh, right there and say, well, wait a minute. Uh, some of these are, you know, C's, D's, and F's, and that's, that's not good. Um, surely that means that they can't work. And as we'll see, I think it's the next slide that actually that's not, uh, not true. It depends on the mode. That's the other, uh, that's the other part of the part of the story. But for each of these antennas, they've gone through and they've devoted a few slides to, well, how it works, um, pros and cons of it, how you might install it in, in your particular place. Um, and, and they seem to do a lot of, um, uh, I guess, uh, uh, antenna projects together where, where people will help somebody install an antenna in their attic or something like that. So it seems like a fairly uh, friendly uh, community. Um, but the, the mode is really the, the, the big um, uh, thing to keep in mind that um, what they're telling us is that um, if, you, if you just want to do uh, one of the digital modes uh, that, are, that are very popular, you'll actually do okay with a C or a D grade uh, antenna. It, it can be very well compromised. And I think it's because, especially JT65, at least what I've read about it, it, it has this great ability to uh, uh, grab signals way out of the noise, things that you and I can't hear, it can pick up and grab. And so just having something up is, uh, is enough. Um, but obviously the story gets worse as you move to the left in this chart. And so, um, you know, wanting to do AM and, and wanting to do 160 meters or something like that, well, I don't think that's going to fly. But uh, if you look at other things, it's, uh, it, it's really not so, uh, not so bad. So uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it kind of helps you understand why, why you need to think about the, the mode uh, and the antenna that you, uh, that you pick. So with the flagpole, they, they again put the band up on top about, uh, it, it's kind of a rap sheet, if you will, about how stealthy it is and what bands it's good on and all that sort of thing. Um, and, and, and so it, it does pretty well, uh, they say, from 40 meters down to, down to 10. Uh, I think a lot depends, I, I think, on how uh, high the flagpole is and, and, and how well, good a job you've done with um, uh, say the radials and, and and setting up the tuner so it can uh, uh, work remotely, but uh, uh, it, it they, they seem to be pretty pleased with the uh, the results. Um, it definitely seems to work well. I think if you at least have like a little um, plot of land that you can use as your I'll call it your radial field where you can uh, dig the trenches and uh, and, and put them in. Um, let's see. So, oh, somebody asked how long are the radials? So, so fortunately, uh, do they, no, they don't say in this, but I'll uh, try to dig that one up. Um, but just to use it as a 21 foot uh, vertical, I think that's okay. That may be one of the, uh, the shorted one, uh, shortened ones, and, and that's all right. Um, one of the things they'll talk about, I think in a future slide is, is what to do under the, the rock here and why that's an important part of it. Um, but uh, again, it does uh, does quite well. Um, and the, they do a nice job here, also explaining the the uh, you know the site uh, location and how to run the coax and 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 doing kind of a very thorough job. So I, I thought that was uh, uh, wonderfully done. And oh, here we go with the uh, the loading. So the important thing is to. Uh, I have the, the tuner right at the base of the antenna uh, so that uh, uh, you, you can tune the antenna remotely and, and not have uh, long runs of coax with high SWR. Uh, it's really all about getting power to the antenna and out. Um, uh, and so um, adding, adding some kind of uh, trim around it, uh, they show some, uh, some stone, some decorative stone there, and that's, that's okay. Uh, I think they have one better. Um, I, I like their comment too about uh, the best rule is not to have it look like an antenna at all, which which uh, I think uh, I think makes sense. Uh, here they talk about doing the the radials. Um, obviously, you can do the uh, the dog fence installers. That's a device that you can uh, you can rent or have somebody come in and do. But they said you can actually do okay with a, an edger. I, I, I will say I think the soil in Florida is probably a little bit more amenable to that than what we have here. 
uh, at least in my neighborhood, there's an awful lot of clay. So I think having a little uh, horsepower behind the uh, the digging is probably uh, a, a good a good one. But yeah, finally, they, they uh, give you the uh, Lowe's part number for the uh, well pump cover uh, that you can put right on top of the antenna and, uh, and cover it up. So uh, uh, it looks pretty good. And obviously keeping the, uh, uh, the run into the shack uh, relatively short is always a good idea. Uh, I, I guess I'm more sensitive to that than, than most because I, I do a lot of VHF work. So I'm always, I'm always worried about my losses, but, but you'll hear uh, about that later. So these are my personal observations. Um, I, I have the nice situation, I guess, that uh, uh, my, my workplace where I am now and, and my ham shack are about uh, uh, 10 or 15 feet apart in my basement. And, and so I frequently go back and forth between one and the other. And um, the, uh, the pictures that you see here, the, the one on the left is actually the view I get from my, my workspace if I look straight up I can I can look at the conduit in there. Um, it, it took me a while to realize after I looked at my house, I, I lived here quite a while and said, uh, how can I get uh, coax up to the attic and, and do it uh, uh, discreetly and, and kind of with a minimum amount of uh, uh, feed? Because I think uh, uh, keeping the, uh, the feed short is, is an important part of uh, having a, a, an attic antenna. So uh, uh, right above me is a, uh, a small, uh, it's like a closet really, uh, which is a wet bar. And so you can see the plumbing on the left there. And it, that was my hint. It's like, well, if there's a drain there, uh, there must be enough room in that space for a piece of uh, a conduit to fit in. And um, I can thread my coax up through that. So sure enough, uh, a little um, strategic uh, drilling and um, uh, help with a friend and, and we lined it up and it just went right into place without, uh, without any trouble. So the, the picture on the left is from the, the view from the bottom. And then the picture on the right is the view from the, the top. It comes right up. You can see the, the drain vent that I uh, uh, paralleled there and, and the coax that I have going in. Uh, so it was pretty easy to, uh, uh, to do. So uh, up in the attic, uh, so there's a picture of my uh, J-Pole for two meters and 440. And, and then I've got a Yagi that I uh, play around with with uh, satellites pointed uh, uh, up. And um, they both work pretty well. Um, uh, the truss uh, uh, attics are really uh, a challenge for me. I, I, I grew up with houses where you went in the attic and you always had a nice flat f uh, floor. Uh, you, you stored the boxes there for... Uh, uh, for Christmas and, and other odds and ends, and, and that was it. And, and now I go up in the attic, and uh, it's like an obstacle course to, uh, to get anywhere because uh, all the structural things are, uh, are inside. But uh, there's, there's plenty of space. I've, I've got a very high clearance there. I think my clearance might be as much as uh, somewhere around 12 or 15 feet at the max. Uh, so there's a lot of room, and, and I try to keep things up and out of the way in case somebody has to go up there and do electrical work or something like that. But uh, uh, it works out uh, pretty well. I try to keep things away from the wood. Uh, you can see too on the uh, picture on the left, uh, uh, the, in the back uh, behind my J-pole there, there's uh, the vent for the furnace. Uh, it's a big uh, six or eight inch vent. So uh, I try to keep everything away from that. Uh, I don't need any uh, additional uh, uh, reflectors. So uh, some of the things I've, I've learned in, in doing this, I'll, I'll just kind of summarize, but uh, I'm a real stickler about trying to keep my coax run as short as possible. Um, most of mine are uh, 50 feet um, and uh, that, that seems to do pretty well. Uh, if I can get uh, from my shack in the basement all the way up to the uh, right underneath the roof uh, in 50 feet, I think I'm, I'm doing pretty well. Um, uh, I'm also a stickler about using high quality coax um, just to keep the noise level down. And I figure, well, uh, a, a dB that I don't lose on the way up to the uh, antenna, uh, I'm sure I may lose going through the, uh, the roofing material, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a trade-off, but it's obviously uh, very important uh, with uh, uh, VHF and, and UHF. So uh, I, I do that. I think one of the things out of my own, past experience when I lived in Michigan, I got interested in uh, uh, two meter sideband. 
And um, one of the things I learned from that was to be uh, what I'll call a perfectionist about uh, everything because it's 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 a it's a mode when things work well they work well but they don't uh, there's a lot of noise and other things that get in the way and so I learned uh, the the value of good coax and good connections and 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 short runs uh, there and and I've tried to apply that um, uh, here too uh, some of the things I can report about having an antenna in the attic I, I have no environmental problems whatsoever um, uh, I have no problems with wind UV uh, snow or or ice. Um, and they, they kind of laugh at me when I go into um, Ham Radio Outlet and say, um, I, I pick up a piece of cable and I say, I'm going to do some antenna work this weekend. And there's uh, six inches of snow outside. And they said, well, you don't want to do it today, do you? I said, no, it's actually a good day for me to do that. Uh, it can be a little cold up there, but uh, um, I, don't, uh, I don't mind. Um, obviously, uh, signal losses are inevitable. But I think the thing to get over is the idea that... Uh, you know, being inside isn't isn't the same as being in a Faraday cage. Uh, signals get out, signals get in. I've had long conversations with people, and uh, I think it was on Facebook. Uh, they wouldn't put an antenna up in their attic because they said, "Well, I'll lose signal." I said, "Well, you have to put up something and and listen, see what you can what you can hear. You you don't you can't just automatically say, "Well, it, it doesn't work." It's like it may work well or it may not. Uh, but I do a lot of experiments just trying to uh, uh, gauge the effectiveness of my antennas. Uh, so some of my tricks are uh, to listen to the weather stations. Um, they put out a, obviously a continuous signal and you can uh, get a good uh, uh, idea of what's going on there. Uh, repeaters are okay too. Uh, they're not always on, but uh, uh, you can always uh, get a, a reading from that. Uh, a little bit further down the line, FM broadcast st stations are okay. Uh, and then uh, an HF, a uh, WWV, or, um, is, is a good beacon, too, to, uh, to listen to, uh, to compare antennas. Uh, I'm definitely a big uh, comparer of antennas. One of my uh, favorite pieces of equipment is actually my, my AB switch, uh, because I'll put uh, two antennas up there and, and, and match them off against each other and see how they do. And uh, my progression upstairs has actually been, I just started off with a a quarter wave dipole for uh, uh, two meters and that did okay but I started taking uh, data and, and, and trying to figure out what was going on and I said I think I can do a little bit better than this so I got one of uh, Ed Fong's uh, DBJ1s loved it I thought it did really well and uh, uh, but then uh, oh, a year or so ago I inherited uh, the uh, the J Paul and I said well I've got to put them both up there and, and compare. And actually, the J-Pole uh, went out a little bit. It was a little bit better uh, uh, in terms of, especially on two meters. I didn't test it as thoroughly on uh, on 440. So uh, I think, yeah, we're close. Um, I, you know, I think ham radio antennas are definitely feasible in an HOA. I, I, I'd say that you, you do have to think about what your expectations are. Uh, you're not going to be maybe a big gun. Uh, the way you might if you had a tower or something like that, but uh, you can still get on there and, and do it. Uh, you know, I always look at ham radio uh, uh, as, as kind of this uh, smorgasbord where we can go in and, and try a lot of different things and, and find things that we like, and but we can try a lot of things and see how they work. So uh, I, I kind of take being in an HOA as a, uh, as a challenge to uh, uh, see what I can do with what I have. Uh, I will say at some point in the future, I may try to put up an outside antenna, but I think I, I want to uh, save that for a, a, a nicer opportunity, meaning uh, uh, I, I'd only do it, I think, if I found something where I would really benefit from having the antenna outside and it wouldn't uh, upset the sensibilities of our, of our neighbors. But um, it definitely favors certain modes. Obviously, uh, digital modes or, or CW or the of the best, um, although I get out on FM uh, okay, um, and uh, I, I don't I really have any complaints with that. In fact, uh, one of my favorite FM activities is uh, in the summer I'll listen to uh, Simplex and uh, I hear people up in the mountains and uh, eh, I don't work all of them, but uh, I work a fair number, and so I'm 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 happy with that, and uh, and I get pretty good signal reports, so I won't uh, I won't complain. Um, 
but uh, for I think for operating kind of in a stealthy fashion, somewhere between um, uh, 20 meters and 70 centimeters is kind of the the sweet spot. Um, the antennas start to get long, as as we all know. Uh, uh, once we go uh, beyond 20 meters, um, and I think I, I think the uh, 70 centimeters is probably a good upper limit. You might argue that maybe you could go uh, one notch higher, but uh, it's a little bit trickier, I think. But it's it's a they get to be small antennas at that uh, stage. That's one of the things I love about uh, 440 is the antennas are such a nice size that. You, you could put something up that would probably do quite well and um, uh, that would that wouldn't be so uh, so bad um, so uh, I have uh, some conclusions as, as you saw earlier um, the uh, like I said the antenna guide is um, I think 70 some pages uh, and they do kind of uh, the same job I did they probably do it better than I did but they they do uh, they cover all types of antennas and show ways to install them and um, I, I think it's a nice lesson. And uh, you can do these things as long as you kind of follow a few uh, basic uh, basic rules. Um, the stealth antennas thing I, it was something I came across. I think that they're in, um, he's in Maryland and, and kind of a similar thing and, and some of the ways that he's uh, uh, worked on it. And then the two AARRL books, uh, small antennas and uh, W1FB's uh, antenna notebook. That's a little old. But he's got some great advice in there, uh, Doug DeMal. And, um, and Steve Fords is, is great. He, uh, he looks at, 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 at uh, uh, antennas like in your, uh, your, your spare bedroom or something like that. I, I, I was never a big fan of that because that, that seemed like that was a little bit too much RF uh, too close to me. I'd, I'd rather have the RF uh, at least in another room uh, and, and not, uh, not, not right at me. So... So I think uh, I'll I'll end with that and um, and see if there are any questions. I will uh, endeavor. Any questions for Stan? By the way, the uh, D Jeff put the invitation in the chat for the drawing. So you're welcome to go in the chat and uh, click on that link and get your name in the in the hat. So uh, uh, I got a question. Go ahead. Stan, uh, Ed here, AE0YR. Who makes that flagpole you were talking about? Oh, I think. I'm trying to remember. Um, let's see if. That could be an option for me. I'm just. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a nice one. They, they talk about the well pump there. And. Well, I have a real well pump, too. I can. <laughs> I, I can maybe... Okay. Um no, they just say flagpole and kit. So I don't, I don't know uh, Maybe I just where Google they got it. it. Yeah, you can do that, and and certainly um, uh, the guys at the ham club there at the villages were very, uh, very friendly. So if you have a question about that, I'd, I'd send them a note and and ask them. Um, I, I, for some reason, I don't know if this is right, but for some reason, um, Harbor Freight pops into my mind there's one of those know. i think on uh we have those around here yeah 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 i i think i saw that somewhere but i i, I did read a lot of things getting ready for this and um so i don't know if uh the harbor freight comment goes with this particular flagpole that we're looking at or or what but um i think in qst i if i remember right i saw something in there where uh uh, there's a company that uh, sell them. I, I think it's in QST. You might check that. I saw a couple things pop up here. I'm looking yeah, at the chat. Maybe, uh, people have some thoughts on that. So, comment, please. Sure. Go ahead. Hi, it's uh, Dick Nelson N6 WHV. Uh, I enjoy working the HF bands and live in a two-story house in an HOA. I'm a closet ham in that there's a closet upstairs where the crawl space or the cover is to the attic. And I have a five band trapped dipole up there. I think it's a diamond. And uh, I, in the last year, I have made 1,200 contacts and worked 65 countries. 
uh, all with 100 watts or less, and the tuners and the radio, and mostly most of that's on FT8, but there's been sideband and and what have you. So, you know, it's not all bad. No, no, it sure isn't. I agree. Thank you. And and I I will admit too, it, it, at one of the places I lived, I was a, a closeted ham too. That that seemed to be a convenient convenient spot. Okay, any other questions for, for Stan? <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is kind of not too good this evening. Okay, and nothing else. Interesting stuff. Uh, Jerome just put... Uh, put the link up. Thanks, yeah, the Thanks link. Ron. So, good there. Um Jeff has the uh, drawing in the in the chat, so uh, go in there. Uh, somebody said something about their smoke detector. They mm. didn't catch what I go look there. Yeah, I guess it depends. I mean, um, uh, with the smoke detectors, if they're hardwired or connected by um, Wi-Fi, I don't. I don't know. So Jerry at the peak, I saw 52 participants, and we've got 17 responses to the drawing so far. Wow! Okay. So we had six. We had 60 some there a while. Wow! 61 or two, I believe. But now we're down to what? 50. Okay. So if you haven't gotten the drawing, please uh, go into the link and, and do it. We're going to draw here in a minute or so. So <clears throat> thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Interesting stuff. My pleasure. I guess uh, I'm one of the fortunate fortunate ones that has a can do outside antennas, and uh, uh, but it's good to uh, get all the information. It's uh, I'm sure it's it helps a lot of people. Um, I know uh, Dick and I talk frequently, and uh, we've talked about some of his uh, his stuff there. So anybody, everybody in the drawing that wants to get in? How many we got now, Jeff? Um, 17. Uh, Randy says that uh, with regard to the, the smoke detectors, hardwired detectors with common connection. That was my first thought was if they're hardwired, you know, I may, may need to put chokes on them somewhere to yeah. keep the RF out. Oh, because it's acting like an antenna. Exactly. Yeah, I've got a hardwired one. It's never given me any. Yeah, issue. I do too. I've I've not had that problem. And I run about a half a kilowatt at one sometimes. So, but that don't mean anything. <laughs> okay. But you're not using inside antennas, right? You've, you've no, no. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I got one. I've got a 900, uh, 900 meg antenna inside. Other than that, everything's outside. But not a half a kilowatt inside, right? <laughs> no, not a 900. You could cook a hamburger with that. Yeah, <laughs> you could. Uh, okay, we still well, have 17. Nothing, yeah, we're still stuck at 17. Should I go okay, ahead? so we'll uh, go ahead and roll it, I guess, uh, uh, Jeff. And uh, again, Stan, thank you. Appreciate it, taking the time to put it together. I, I know a guy that lives in the villages that I used to work with, mm -hmm. and I didn't have any idea that it was that huge. You know, when he told me he was in the village, I thought, you know, it's just a, just a, you know, <laughs> A condo, you know, like anything else, but boy, my God, um, that is, uh, we said 130,000, how many people? 130,000. 130,000. And that was, that was last year. So this wow. year may be more. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I think that it, they have a lot of space and, and they've just been slowly filling it up. Um, and, and it's, it's also, uh, uh, I guess I call it a golf cart community that, um, uh, you can get just about anywhere you want to go with a I golf cart. I bet you can. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, Jerry, I did the randomiz randomization, and the winner is uh, Bill Worthington, KE0YKV. Bill, you can buy some parts for your antenna repairs. Okay. KE0YKV? Correct. Bill, okay. He, he looks happy. He looks happy. 
I'll make a note here. Kathy will, uh, yeah. will uh, get it sent off to you more than likely tomorrow. So uh, After this, I'm not going to sign up anymore. <laughs> it's all, it's a random time. Yeah, it's, I, I thought it was your second time, but it is random. The, the, uh, the computer spins them and, and uh, uh, picks one out. So it's, it is truly random. Well, congratulations, Bill. Well, and, thank uh, you. Um, now I got to think of what to buy. Well, that's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other final questions for Stan or, or, or anything for that matter? Hearing none, seeing none, I guess we'll just say uh, good evening and uh, uh, don't have anything else. So thank you all for uh, joining up. I don't know, you know, like I've put in the, in the, uh, in our website and stuff, we have no idea. Uh, we'd love to do face-to-face uh, -face meetings again, but uh, number one, we don't have a place to do it now, uh, thanks to the county commissioners. And, uh, you know, same as the uh, trying to do a ham fest. Uh, we've always enjoyed doing that. And we just, uh, there again, Jefferson County, uh, where we've always done it, uh, up at the fairgrounds, they uh, uh, are just limiting the use to agricultural type stuff, horses and the like. So we're kind of looking, we've got a couple ideas for 2022. So hopefully we'll, we'll get back and be able to do you know, the activities that we all uh, enjoy. We did, we did pull off field day this year. And uh, thanks to Mark for arranging that out there. It wasn't uh, probably ideal. It'd been nice to have some trees, but it still was a very good location. And uh, we had a good time. And uh, all in all, it worked out really, really well. We're on track for uh, next year as well. Yeah, we're, we're, on the, we're on the schedule for next year. So uh, unless uh, something else should happen, that, that field day will be at the same spot next year. And we did have a good turnout. And uh, we could use less rain. Yeah, well, you have to work on that. Yeah. We'll work on that. We'll get a committee or something, you know. So, with that, thank you, everybody. We'll just call it a night and uh, uh, see you on the net next week, I guess. Okay. Three to all. Yeah. See ya. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, again, thanks everyone for uh, joining me here um, on YouTube, uh, whether it be for the Elmer session or the Learning Net or the monthly meeting here. Always appreciate that. Uh, put links into the, uh, the description of the video for the uh, PowerPoint presentation for this evening's uh, presentation. Um, yeah, appreciate everyone being here. And um, I don't have much more for this evening. Uh, so thanks everyone for being here. Uh, we'll see you all.